G'day listeners and welcome to another episode of the Scouting Australia podcast powered by Australian Property Scout Buyers Agency. I'm your host, Sammy Gordon, and today, guys, I'm very excited. We've got an inspiring story, an inspirational young man that's coming in today uh, as an investor story. And I know I get it, I get excited by these things because everyone loves them. They love hearing about someone's journey, their story, whether it's someone with a couple of properties or 10 or whatever it is. It's always people coming from different walks of life um, and having built different amounts as well. So I'm very, very excited to introduce an Australian property scout. Uh, I'll call him a legend because he is a legend. He's also been called the Aussie battler from Logan. Mate, Mr. Ethan Kelly, buddy, welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. Good to be on here. Oh, I did not realize you actually did that introduction live every single time. <laughs> I do, mate. I do. Every time I run with it, man. I run with it. How are you feeling, man? You're you excited? You're nervous? How are you feeling about sharing your story? Oh, good, mate. Excited. You know, a little bit nervous, but just keen to get it out there and hopefully people understand where I'm coming from in it and actually get interested in like investment properties and properties themselves, even yeah. if it's only a PPI. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Yeah. Mate, we're trying to inspire people to do more than a PPI. So I'd say get your energy levels up, <laughs> mate. Give us some more value yeah, yeah. than that. <laughs> Need, need a couple more iced coffees to get me through. <laughs> Mate, I'll get them coming. They're going to be coming <laughs> soon. Now, I mean, like one of the, the massive reasons that, that I'm I'm literally inspired by your story as well, mate, is we don't get like, you don't hear about that many people. Mate, you're 25. You've yep. built a five property portfolio. You've got a, a, a great, you know, position that you're in now. And, and I know you're, you're hungry to build more as well. So, yep. man, honestly, it, it is a super, super inspiring story. So I'm, I'm dead excited to jump into this and go through it all. Yeah, definitely, mate. Me too, you know, worked hard for it, but you know, we're getting there through it. 100%, man, 100%. Man, before we jump into it, I called your brother Oh God! before we did this and I said, mate, give me some ammo, give me some dirt. I know Ethan's going to try and, he's going to try and stir me up. So you sent me a list here. I want you to explain what was going on your in your head with a few of these things. I, I, mate, in his words exactly, you were a menace growing up. Yep. How's this one? Drove past dad driving the other way down the street when he was 12 years old, set his carpet on fire in his bedroom and yep. tried to claim he couldn't smell anything. <laughs> yep. Smashed two windows in the same day. Oh, that was a golf ball rebounding, you know. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> oh, so it was double, <laughs> double whammy in one hit. <laughs> Not straight, your fault. Straight off a swing set, you know, back into the kitchen window. <laughs> Whoopsies. Would break into your room if he thought you and your missus were up to no good? Yep. Whoopsies. <laughs> I, was, I was very mature. <laughs> And, and my favorite, because this is pretty much me, was uh, would throw table tennis rackets at you if you lost. <laughs> Isn't that what everyone does? <laughs> well, i got to say, I do it as well. So, mate, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm a sore loser. Any, uh, any comments, mate? Uh, I sort of knew it was coming out, but, you know, that's why I just wish Jimmy was here today. There's a whole reason I came and he's not here. So oh, mate, I'm, I'm ready sorry. to pack up and go home. Should, should, we, should <laughs> we call this a wrap <laughs> and I'll get him in? Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah call it quits. <laughs> you know, we'll wait for him to turn up. Fly him up from Melbourne. <laughs> from Melbourne. Oh, mate, how good, how good. So you're a menace starting out. You're a menace of society. How, yep. how have you gotten where you are now? Where you, you Mate, you're five properties deep. You're 25 yep. years old. What, what's changed? Has anything changed? I'm um, probably still a menace, but just realising, you know, I've got to set myself up for the future and all that sort of stuff. And just every so often something clicks in your head and all that sort of stuff where you go, actually, I need to improve on that. Like I accidentally became a property investor in reality. Okay. I was looking for my own like PPR as yep. an upgrade and that, and I just got sick of the market of the time, which was in Brisbane. Yep. That sort of stuff. And then I just went, oh, screw it. I'll go start buying investment properties. And yeah. That was only the second property I bought. And in the past two years since then, I've ended up buying another three. So five in total now. Beautiful, mate. Well done. So, yeah. Well done. And when you yeah. bought that first property, how old were you? I was 19. So I had just turned 19 when I purchased my you first. You just place. turned 19? Yeah. Mate, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. inspiring stuff. Yeah. It was nerve wracking at the time. It <laughs> probably wasn't my best purchase, but that's like a lot of things with everyone in their first property. Mate, it's you've done all right though. Like obviously, yeah. like it hasn't absolutely shot the lights out, but I think yeah. I think when we're running numbers, you're up about what, about 50, 60% in, in what, six years or something? Yeah. Yeah. So it's done well thanks to COVID and all that sort of stuff. It's <laughs> not one of those ones in Melbourne or anything like that where you go and look at it and you go 10 years later and it's worth less than what you paid. Still, so, yeah. Still yeah. the same value. Yeah. Can't complain. Yeah. Nah, that's good, man. Yeah. That's good. Man, before we jump into the portfolio, obviously buying your first property at 19, man, it's, in, it's an inspiring inspiring stuff, especially yeah. as I love to call you for my Aussie battler from Logan. Mate, yeah. to buy your first property at 19, that's inspiring, yeah. man. That's awesome. Yeah. I was, like, I was definitely nerve wracking at the time though. And Jesus Christ, I'd never spent so much money in my life. <laughs> and when the bank actually takes it out of your account, you're sort of looking at your bank account afterwards and go, I actually took it. Yeah. You know? I know. It feels weird that <laughs> first one. Hey? I just want the property. I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> mate, I want to I wanna rewind a little bit, right? So yep. 
Obviously, you bought, you bought the first one at, at 19, and we'll run through all the numbers on that one in a little bit. But, yeah. man, I'd love to know what makes you tick. Like, obviously, you are, you, you, you're a menace to society, according to your family, yeah. and then you've, you've turned from that into, into a fellow's bought his first property at 19. Would you say that, like, even that and being ultra competitive, you say, you say you're not a sore loser. In my mind, because I, I was very similar when I was younger, I was a sore loser. I struggled losing. Yeah. But I also realized now I look back and like I was ultra competitive. Like they, they yeah. go hand in hand, right? Like is that is that really I guess what sort of yeah drove you from that yeah. end? Were you both both of those things? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I just wanna <coughs> do one job and then just get better and better and better at it. I don't wanna stop. I hate standing still. Like even with the properties, I think I've bought one every like six months roughly. And that's what I want to continue doing. I don't I hate being stagnant. I hate feeling like I'm limited. Yep. So I just want to keep growing, obviously, personally and the portfolio itself. Like I listen to podcasts all the time as I drive for work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just can't stay standing still and I want to beat everyone else is my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's awesome. So yeah. like, I guess, I guess like, you know, going back to that sort of time as well, like what was it, what was it in your, did you know from a very young age that it was going to be property? No. So like, what, um, like what made you, yeah. What made you want to go property or even invest in general? Um, that's a good question. Like property, it wasn't never on my radar. Okay. All I really wanted was my own like principal place of residence okay. to live in, you know, nice acre and a half, two acres sort of thing, sort of where I grew up. Mm -hmm. Other than that, wasn't on my radar at all. Okay. Even investing up until I started like getting the first property, I've owned no shares in my life. Haven't, I couldn't even tell you how to buy them, <laughs> that sort of stuff. But once I got the first one and I could see what it was actually doing yep. and how it was like helping me and how it was increasing my net worth. And that, that's just what I wanted to keep doing. So I'm always about obviously increasing my net worth and retiring early at some stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Depending on when that is, if that's 40, 50 or whenever it is. I yeah, just want to, yeah. I, I don't think I'll be able to stop buying property. So it's probably going to be later in life. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Okay. So you, you literally will, like you said before, actually, you're an accidental investor. You're kind of yeah. just looking at this thing as, as your primary residence. So what was it? What was the driver? Like what, what made you want to go and buy the primary residence then? Because primary residence for 19 and, and obviously- I joke around about this, right? But you, yeah. you're from Logan, right? Like, yeah. um, I grew up in a lower socio sort of style area as well, and, and and I didn't know I don't know anyone, especially in my area, that bought their first their first home at 19. It's yeah. like, what made you want to buy the house? A house at 19? You said you got fed up with the market. Were you yeah. trying to? You were a menace. Your family were kicking you out. Like, what was what was going on here? Uh, I was fed up with the market on the second one. So that was a couple okay. of years later. The okay. first one, my dad and his missus were moving down the coast. Okay, sort of stuff too. Selling the family house, and okay. I just hated the idea of renting. And that's, so I just went, oh, well, I've got enough money saved up. You know, I wasn't on a massive income. Yep. And that's the first one and ended up being a townhouse in um, Sucks Creek. Yep. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sweet, man. All right. Talk me through the numbers then. If we, if we kind of jump through and start diving through, uh, you know, the, the initial phase of the portfolio and buying yep. this first one, why, why Slacks Creek? Why a townhouse? You know, what, what yep. was, what kind of drove you? Was it purely price point? Um, or yeah. What, what, what kind of made you go down that avenue as well? Um, purely price point like okay. i earned i think it was about 43 44 thousand dollars a year back okay. then that sort of stuff too and i just couldn't afford a proper freestanding house and actually to live comfortably do, like, you, do you remember what your max borrowing capacity was back then oh, i think it was like two hundred and sixty thousand okay. or something like that okay. so i had a little bit more in the tank but then i would have had to pay lmi and i was actually scared of lmi back then so you bought your first property 80 percent lvr yeah did so you really 80 percent lvr <laughs> yeah okay that was forty two thousand, i think deposit yeah, yeah. or something like that and there was um, all your first homeowners grants in Queensland at the time, so no stamp duty or anything okay. like that. And did you get a grant as well when you bought it or just no, the no stamps? Just no stamps, just because no it was a, um, already pre-built property. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a, the, the new homes or a new yeah a new build or buying land building yourself. That's where the grants were, right? Yeah, yeah correct. Okay, so, so mm -hmm. talk, talk me through the number. You're saying $42,000 deposit, so I'm guessing $210,000 purchase. Uh, $212,000. $212,000. So, yeah. okay. Okay, a little sweet. bit of Mate, Two grand, mate. Come on. You told me. You told me forty two thousand. Come on, mate. Let's go. All right, sweet. So, um, all right. So two hundred two hundred twelve thousand dollars purchase there. Now, what was yep. it? A three, two bed, a three bed, uh, three bed, three bed, one, one and a half bath, one car. Now, what's the address? No, I'm <laughs> joking. You still live there, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully, not for much longer. <laughs> nah, that's good, man. All right, yep. beautiful. And so it was price. But okay, so so the 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 twenty percent deposit, you know, was yep. was was what made you spend the lower end of the price bracket, not going to LMI. Yeah. So you just didn't understand LMI, like you were scared of it back then. Yeah, my broker at the time probably didn't explain it to me too well, okay. and I was just in there going, "Why do I want to pay the bank like mm. more money so I can actually just get more money? Like, yep. why am I paying LMI mm. when I don't I didn't see myself as a risk? Yeah. And that, but I've learned since then, and a lot of the other properties have been LMI. Yeah. 
and that. But yeah, I was just scared of LMI back then. Okay. Didn't want to pay the extra couple grand. Well, you know what I find is the biggest thing as well, man, is like so many brokers, they don't explain it properly, right? So exactly like you said just yep. then, because man, like um, I never got explained to me 88% lens, right? Yep. So 12% deposits until I was, until like I actually was well past it and, and I'd already gone past it and had started becoming a 20%, like a 20% deposit player myself yep. as well. Um, but all, all through my initial, I think it was the first eight or nine properties or something I bought were all 90 and 95% LVRs. Yeah. And the, the thing that no one explains to you is, <clears throat> well, sorry, they should explain to you, right? But majority of people don't yep. is it moves in increments. So like it's a risk rating increments, right? And so the whole idea of, of the 88% LVR is is they then capitalize the mortgage insurance into the loan. So you don't actually pay the extra amounts capitalized yep. in. You do, but you don't you don't have to physically pay it. Yep. And then it keeps it under the 90% threshold, right? A lot of time it actually keeps under the 89 and a half. And so the LMI component on an 88% LVR is generally half what it is at 90%. But yep. you're almost tipping in the same amount because you have to pay it a lot of the time. When you hit 90, you actually have to pay it yep. physically. Whereas at the at the 88, they capitalize it into loan. It's crazy. It's almost exactly the same amount uh, in terms of how much you you have to outlay. Yep. But because they can capitalize in the loan and, and build it from that, it's it's a it's a massive saving that so many people don't know about. And like obviously yep. you you know it wasn't explained to you back in the day as well, and it definitely wasn't to me. Yep. I was doing loans at like 90, 95, and just paying. 90, 95% LVRs and paying stupid amounts of LMI. So yeah. it's, man, I think it's cool when you when you get taught that thing and, and, and find out all these little hacks. Um, it's such a game changer in your portfolio as well. Yeah, definitely. Like I wish I knew it back then because I probably would have bought a house back then. Yeah. And they have performed in the areas I was looking a lot better than my little townhouse. It's, that, so. it's, it's crazy, man, because like I'm going to do a potty one day because there's a few spruikers that you and I know well <laughs> that go out there and they just talk about buying these cheap shit units and I, I yep. hate them. I hate them with a the passion, both the buyer's agents and the properties, <laughs> and right? The properties, yeah. it, it's, it's, it has performed for you now, but it yep. was funny, like during COVID, houses in that in Slacks doubled, man. I own property yep. in Slacks. They all doubled or more yep. and, the, and the townhouses at the time barely increased, yep. right? They barely like, moved. It was still worth 220 up until probably mid-2021, yeah. early 2022. Yep. And since then, that's when it's it's actually had its growth because mm. I was looking at it going, oh, do I just get rid of this thing now and sell it and then buy my own PPR? Yep. But I was deciding to rent it yeah. out anyway. Well, it's probably so. a good thing you hang on to it through yeah. that period. You yeah. know what actually drove it, man? It probably, it COVID, COVID had a big impact on driving the housing market there, right? Yep. But when interest rates started going through their big run, the houses now became unaffordable and the and the townhouses became the affordable option in that area. So a lot yep. of people were moving out of the, the, the rentals, which were skyrocketing and moving yep. into that lower end product. So that's, it was actually funny finally watching that kind of, that growth run yep. sort of come through to, to that, which is, which is good, man, which yeah. has obviously been super awesome. beneficial for you as well. Yeah, finally paid off for me sort of thing. <laughs> I was watching all the houses and I'm just sitting there going, oh no. <laughs> I'm like, my place has stayed stagnant for four years and all that sort of stuff. And you're watching the houses go up 50, 60, 70% oh, sort of thing. As yeah. you, go, you start making regrets at that time. Mate, tell but me, you get through it. when you bought it, what, what did you think it was worth? Um, Well, I overpaid. I probably should have only paid maybe 200 for it. Okay. And that, but the market did dip probably the year and a half, two years after I bought it too. So I think they probably dropped down to about 190 at one stage okay. too. So, because it was a time when 2017 was a time where everyone was hyping Brizzy, eh? Yeah. Like everyone was talking so much. Because I remember there was that window, a lot of buyers agents bought 2016, 17, and the market dipped 2018, 19, 20 until, until COVID really gave yeah. it that final kick as well. So, yeah. so you kind of copped that as well. Yeah. I cut a little bit of a loss on there, but didn't okay. realize it because I didn't sell it sort of thing. Yeah. But going back through, like I'm always on realestate.com. So I'd go back through and look at the house prices and the unit <laughs> prices, and I'll go, oh, that one's the exact same as mine in the same complex, and it sold a year and a half later for. 20 grand less than what I paid. So I'm now though? Uh, now probably conservatively 360. Okay, beautiful. Oh, stuff too, oh mate, kind of that's awesome. So yeah, yeah. it's Sweet doing well nice. now, thankfully. Yeah. That, but. That's the funny thing that you find on the, um, on those lower, on that lower end stuff, that product that, realistically isn't isn't as desirable in a lot of these markets as well but when when the interest rates go on their run it's the it's the most affordable option that there is in the market yeah. and, and that's what really starts to give them a kick especially i'm sure what, what have rents done in that in that complex as well do you keep yeah. your eye on the rents as well oh, of course i yeah. can't help myself and that's would be probably minimum 450 a week 450 a week now yeah. for that yeah, yeah beautiful and and what would do you remember what they would have been back then when you bought it like oh, 250 oh, 300 yeah maybe i didn't even look back then okay and that i was only on purchasing sort of stuff so i didn't even go through rental i couldn't bring myself to do it <laughs> oh, like I know it's hard nowadays for people and like renting and all that sort of stuff. But I was in a fortunate position, so don't so, attack me, people. <laughs> <laughs> a 
hey, tell me something. What um what were you doing at the time as well? So you're making about yeah. forty three grand a year. Yeah. Um, I was a warehouse storeman at the time, so just working in like an industrial textile warehouse. Okay. Uh, so that's just selling like boat fabrics and upholstery and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Too. Right. Okay. That, so yeah, driving a forklift and was that in slacks? Uh, no, that was in uh, Yatla, so Yatla. major industrial area, oh. in southeast Queensland. Regular listeners of yeah. the Scouting Australia podcast would know Yatla well because big Lukey Chusen, every time he heads home from a podcast here, he stops at the Yatla pie shop to grab yeah. a slab of pies to smack on the way back to Brizzy. Just a light <laughs> snack. <laughs> That's it, mate, for the big man himself. Mm. All right, sweet. So you're a Yatla bloody warehouse, um, yep. looking, after, looking after the warehouse, selling, selling fabrics and upholstery yep. and all the rest of it, driving the forklifts. Um, beautiful, mate. Cause, you know, it's actually really funny that I wasn't doing, I wasn't selling that stuff, but I was literally, man, driving around the forklifts, working in the warehouse. Yeah. That's what I was oh, doing yeah. back when I first started as well, That's man. That's exactly so, what I was doing. There you go. The reps there didn't get paid enough to actually sell it. So I just went, I'll stay in the warehouse. <laughs> beautiful, mate. Man, that's 2017, right? Yep. All right, 2017. What, where, where, okay, the gap between the next one, the next one, investment two, what, what year was that? Uh, that was 2021. 2021. Okay, right. So you've had four years. Had the market started kicking at this point, were you stripping equity? Or had you saved the deposit again? Um, I was doing half and half. Sort okay. of so I was taking some equity out. Okay. And that, and then I was also adding in my own cash on top just to obviously buy my PPR, which yep. didn't end up happening. Yeah. Okay. So I'm okay. still in that townhouse now. Okay, sweet. So you were looking at a primary residence yeah. at the time, looking at something else. What were you looking yeah. at? A uh, freestanding house in good old Bean Lee. Bean Lee. Logan and that. So it would have paid off at the time <laughs> and that, but I just couldn't, the prices were jumping that much and yeah. trying to get valuations at the time and all that sort of stuff. And the broker was in my ear going, oh, if you pay that, you're overpaying and all that sort of stuff mm. too. So it was making me nervous at the time. Man, it was, 2021 was a funny time um, and we're about to dive into a funny conversation around this in a second, but it was yep. funny, mate. The market was that hot and it was that tight, especially in a market like that. We actually, at Australian Property Scout, we closed our books for about six months. We stopped, yep. or we, we in in the year of 2021, there was two, three months period that we, we closed our books for because yep. um, it was just, it was extremely hard to actually source for people at the time. Yep. Um, and yeah, man, like I can understand that the way that that market was jumping at that time because the mid mid 2020, like that first year of COVID until like early 2022, the market did like 70 to 80%, right? That's like, yep. like 35 to 40%, probably actually probably more. Like it was, yeah, probably around about 40% as an annualized rate during that period in terms yep. of growth. So it's just like every month those prices were jumping, eh? So, yep. man, that would have been nerve wracking for you. You'd bought one yep. property that you knew you'd overpaid for like in hindsight. So yep. you would have been, same things were going through your head? Yeah, pretty much. I'm, I was scared. Like I'm like, what if the market doesn't continue going up and it comes back again sort of thing at that yeah. time? But now I, there's a couple of houses that I put offers in on. Yep. Or I told the real estate agent he's dreaming for his price. And then he probably got 50 grand above it. Yeah. And <laughs> now I look back at him and they're probably worth 200 grand more than what I would have paid for it. So yeah. you look back in hindsight and you go, it's a lovely thing. Oh, mate. Hindsight's a beautiful thing. Every, everyone's a fucking genius in hindsight. Yeah. That's it. You just look like, ah, oh, I should have just done it. But yeah, back then I was just scared of what the market was going to do sort of thing. And then yep. I just went, oh, well, if I'm priced out of this and all that sort of stuff and I might as well just get my money out there working for me. So I'd been listening to podcasts at the time and mm -hmm. I just wanted my money to actually do something. It doesn't earn anything in the bank really, especially at the time back then when your interest was like 2% bonus interest and all that sort of stuff too. Yeah, the the, the actual, like what the, what the interest yeah. component of bank would pay is like half a percent or a yeah. percent or something. It was nothing. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Like I'd be, I've got that many different bank accounts because I'd be going to the next one that gave me bonus interest every month. <laughs> really? <laughs> And I still haven't closed them all, so that's a bad part. <laughs> go on, mate. Get on there. Yeah. Get on your uh, horse. We'll stop the potty. Right. Go get it done. I was like, when you need cash, yeah, it comes in handy when you've got six different bank cards. You know, you can just go to same <laughs> tap, ATM tap, each tap. time, you know. <laughs> they got a $2,000 limit. You can go out and you can buy your bike or your car and just you don't have to go in the bank. Don't just... tell people that. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> They're all cut up now. <laughs> They're all gone. As of, <laughs> we, we just came back, guys. I just cut all of Ethan's credit cards up. <laughs> I, no, no credit cards? Or just no, bank cards with no a $2,000 limit. Yeah, no. Actually, I've you only had one bus. credit card in my life. Okay. And that was because it came with the bank loan. Okay, right. And oh, they sent you the yeah. one going, you qualify. Yeah. Oh, no, like it was part of my bank loan, oh, okay. like package fee. And never used it until one day it actually got hacked. So someone spent like $400 on it. You never used it and ne some ne other bars used it. it. Someone else used it. And that went on my credit file because I didn't pay it. So I had to actually argue with the bank about taking it off my credit file. No way. And that was a six month ordeal. Just arguing with the bank and going, wow. no, like, you guys have admitted it's fraud. You've paid me back. Yeah. Take it off my credit file. Yeah. So they gave me a letter explaining it. Yeah. 
And then they still didn't take it off my credit file. No way. So trying to like get loans at that time and all that sort of stuff and try to explain to other bankers, I had to get that letter. Yeah. And that's how my broker could send yeah, it it's through. Credit here, eh? yeah. Full credit. So credit it's, here. Yeah. Finally off now though. Mm. Thanks, Lee. But Who's it was an deal. No, Major. All right, mate. So we're, we're now we're in 2021. Yep. So we're fast forward to 2021. Are you still selling fabric and upholstery and driving a forklift at the at the, at the um, factory? No. So at that time, I'd actually switched jobs. Okay. I'd become a um, truck driver. Okay. Sort of stuff too. So got a little pay increase at that time. Okay. And that, so it's probably... What were you making at the time then? If you don't mind me asking, I know those personal oh, questions, mate. I think that time was about 60. Okay. Oh, that's, that's a nice up, little bump. Yeah. You're, uh, you're, up, you're up a fair little chunk there. Yeah. Yeah, probably less. Okay. As a, as a truck driver. A little bit less, yeah. Okay. All right. Beautiful. And that's like coming from 40 to that. It was quite a big jump. It's, sort yeah, of thing. it's, it's definitely a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so, and what were you, what were you driving? What sort of trucks were you driving? Uh, a heavy rigid tilt tray sort of thing. So just delivering construction machinery and all that sort of stuff and okay. anything you need for like your civil projects. Yeah, sweet. That's what I was doing at the time. Yeah. Is that what you still doing now? You still drive those same trucks? Yeah. Yeah. I just drive bigger versions now and okay. I'm also like a driver trainer and all that sort of stuff on my company and go and do like verification of competencies for people and all that sort of stuff okay. too. Okay. Yeah, so just slowly built up. So almost five years of that company now. Beautiful, mate. That's, yeah. Well done. Do you Thank like you. them? Yeah, it's good. It's a good place to work. And my you can tell me off here. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm still there after five years. I wouldn't be there otherwise. <laughs> That's it, mate. That's it. Yeah. It's because I see you on the uh, on the socials, mate, and yeah. your stories with you. Mate, you're out there with your um, your farmer's gear on. you got your hat and your bloody on yeah. your big your big truck and your big yeah. rigs out in the yeah. – the, looks like you're out in the desert. It's that red half oh. the time. <laughs> yeah. I try to be. Gallivant around the countryside. It's nice and peaceful, you know. Yeah. Brisbane traffic drives me nuts. I can imagine, especially in a truck that big. Are <laughs> <laughs> well, you driving through the city and it's painful? But nah, nothing like a challenge getting into a nice tr- tight spot sort of thing. So it comes in handy. Do you, can you reverse park it? Like yeah. uh, like like parallel park it? Yep. Yeah. Can you actually? Yeah. yeah. You need a bit more room than a car, but <laughs> yeah. you can. You're not putting it in a standard spot. <laughs> so I'm gonna drive up and I'm in the I'm in the defender or something. I'm looking. I'm going. Can I fit in this thing? Yeah. You're going. You're you're looking at about six cars length. Going, can I fit in this? Thing? Yeah. I was like, you can do it though, but normally you just put your hazard lights on. You know, couple of beacons and you can park anywhere. People, yeah, <laughs> people move off. That's yeah, they it. don't argue with you when you're 30, 40 ton coming at them. <laughs> oh mate, that's good. That's good stuff, man. I've got to ask you. You, you were gearing up to go for another primary residence potentially. Yep. And then you decided to swap swap tactics and go for an investment instead. Yep. 2021. Did your family know about this? Um, No, I don't think so. They didn't know no. until you'd bought the second one? Yeah, no. Okay. Yep, they didn't know. They were sort of um probably on the more worrying side about, yep. you know, what's he doing is should he be buying that many properties and all that sort of stuff? So yeah. Like, should he sell the other one and then buy another PPR? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that button. So I just kept it quiet. What did they say mm-hmm. about you when you bought the first one? What did they think when you bought the first one? Um, they were happy, yeah. sort of thing. Proud of Yeah, yeah, definitely. So dad was proud and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, you're on the market. He's in there now and that. So yeah, it was good. That's it was good, a good man. feeling. Yeah. But I probably didn't live there for the first four months I owned it. Why is that? And that because I was still living at the family residence. Okay. <laughs> so I just sat there. <laughs> I didn't I didn't even go visit it. Didn't have a bed there. Really? I had nothing. I just so all the money went out of the account. Yeah. Another year. Oh, sick. I got a property. And you didn't yeah. go there for four months. Yeah. No, I lived on acreage. You know, we had a big games room and all that sort of stuff yeah. too. So. Oh, so you're milking that until yeah. it was gone. Oh, yeah. 100%. I stayed there till the last day I got kicked out, you know. <laughs> Did you Airbnb it? <laughs> No, the I didn't even know what Airbnb in, wasn't at the time. The townhouse is in well, Logan. I was like, it would have done all right because it's right near the hospital and university and stuff like that. So That's true. You probably could have like, done it right. could have actually done pretty well if I actually thought about it back then. Here I am cracking Drake. Yeah. Should I take piss out of you? Hey, for those of you who, who don't know, and I, I know I'll be, we've been talking a little bit about this for a bit here. We mentioned yeah. Slacks Creek. And for those of you who don't know where that is, yeah. it's pretty much straight on the freeway. If you're heading between like Goldie and, and Brizzy, it's pretty much straight. It's it's a suburb straight off the freeway to the left, yeah. right? Um, heading, heading back into Brizzy CBD. But it's only yeah. about... 20 if you have no traffic it's like 20 21 minutes back into the city right yeah, yeah have you ever nice. routed that like with zero traffic at night like wow, how yeah close oh, it is? Mate, like 21 you know, yeah. go to the valley and all that sort of stuff you know get on the drink it's yeah 23 minutes in there 23 just, minutes yeah, you know i've timed it perfectly is that and two I, minutes for a quick uh vb stop or what? oh yeah and it takes a bit longer on the way home because you gotta have a macca stop you know after a big night out <laughs> little tack bomb yeah. stop on the way home <laughs> <laughs> did you do that at macca's or that's a second stop no nah, i'll wait till i get home for that okay you know? okay I don't want to pay the Uber surcharge. <laughs> the cleaning charge. <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, mate. All right, buddy. Property number two. Yep. 2021. Talk me through it. You've stripped some equity. You've made some sa- – you've, you've saved up a bit more as well. Yep. How much you got in savings at this point? Oh, actually, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Uh, yeah, it would have been – too many VBs, you lost the memory. Yeah, oh, I actually can't remember back then. I was like, my bank accounts have fluctuated that much in that time. You know, because um, you're going out with your six buddy, your six buddy banking cards and spending twelve <laughs> grand at a time. Uh, I don't think I've actually any, 
bought anything worth more than 12 grand unless it's a property. So, you know, there's a hot tip for your people. There we Don't go. Don't go buy expensive stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Said no. from the young, the young battler himself. I yeah. love it. All right, man. So tw- 2021, second investment property. Talk me through it. Yeah. Um, so I ended up buying in Ipswich, okay. Queensland. Yep. Um, I tried to obviously use APS at the time. That's the stuff too, but you guys had closed your books at the time. And then conveniently, literally one day after I signed the contract with another buyer's agent, um, you messaged me back and said, mate, we can get you on. We can do it. And I'm like, mate, 24 hours ago, I, remember, I would have been I remember sold. the I remember the message and go, oh God, I, I, I was spewing. Yeah. I was, I felt, you know, I felt bad because it, because I know you'd been, you'd reach out a couple of times. I was like, oh, we're closed at the moment. Like we, yeah. you know, we've closed the books at the moment. So mate, I've got to ask you, you're, you, you, how old are you at this point? This is, this is three years ago. You're 20, what, 22, 23? I think I would have just turned 22 when I bought it. Yeah. 22. Yeah. Mate, you're making 60 grand a year. I just got to ask out of curiosity with this. Yeah. What's making you go down the route of a buyer's agent? Obviously a buyer's agent isn't a small expense. What's making you go down this route, this avenue? Um, I just got sick of trying to buy one myself, okay. you know, and all the competition I had at the time and the prices were just. I sold and I'm just going, I can't. Yeah. Can't bring myself to do it. Doesn't stack, eh? Yeah. It's even like now, man, like the, the deals, that we're going to jump into the deals that we've obviously done later as well. I think everything we've bought for you has been off market as well. And it's just like yeah. taking the heat out of the transaction with that, man. It's so key. It's so different, yeah. eh? Yeah. Such a different, such like, a different game. Yeah. A lot of them have been the Friday night deals and all that sort of stuff before they actually go to an open home on the yeah. Saturday or go to market <laughs> or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Go to market on uh, the weekend for the sure. Poor buyers agents, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, we're out there signing house and land. Sorry, not house and land co- contracts. <laughs> signing house contracts. contracts. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Talk me through the numbers. Now, this was obviously this was in the in in the frenzy of when of when Brisbane, Ipswich, Logan, all the rest of it was going pretty nuts during that phase as yep. well. Um, man, talk talk me through the numbers around around the deal and everything as well, and, and probably the experience, man. I, like it's, we don't yep. get too many people on here that are. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy bought a property through another BA as well. Yeah. Um, that one for him, you know, self in his words turned out to be a bit of a lemon, worst yep. worst performer in the portfolio. But man, talk me through. Obviously, this one, you know, you're buying through a, through a, a pretty good time in the market where yep. where it was going through some pretty rapid growth but talk me through yeah get, man get me through the numbers and how the process and everything was and that so i purchased this one it was three hundred forty thousand. yep it was um yeah in your switch suburb called silkstone yep um it was only on like 380 square meters of land so quite a small block all oh, right okay um 2017 build mm-hmm. and stuff too so i got sold from that buyer's agent you know the depreciation depreciation you know, 60 wanna, grand income yeah the depreciation <laughs> all that sort of stuff was going nuts and yep. he's in there he's going oh it's going to be a good deal and all that sort of stuff and so okay. I probably didn't do enough research at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I bought that 340. Can I ask, do you think, what do you think market value was on that at the time as well? Uh, market value on that was probably about 360. Okay. So okay. it so was, it was little, yeah, yeah it was there was a little bit in. of meat in it. Yeah, sort that's of thing good. Okay. And that, so it wasn't too bad. Okay. And that, but yeah, now it's probably worth about 515, yep. you know, 520, just because there's a lot of the same style homes in the area on the same square meterage. So it's yep. actually quite easy to, get the comparables on yeah 100 percent. yeah the market was absolutely charging out there at the time eh? it was yeah. it was it was a wild time um all right man well then tell us why did you why did you make why did you make the shift over to aps like you you've you've, yeah. you've done a deal there. there's a little bit of there's a little bit of meat in the in the in the in the way into the deal as well what yeah. made you what made you shift well also i wanted to use aps from the beginning and lots yeah. of stuff and this buyer's agent it was a bit of a tosser <laughs> <laughs> like to put it nicely you know it was just condescending the whole time okay. and all that sort of stuff and then after I'd settled on that property with him, he started just emailing me like bulk properties. Okay. And that, and he's, I just hate his marketing. It was all BCC. I'm like, okay. mate, you're not even spending money on like a proper like mailing system. You mm. just like blank carbon copy me into all your emails <laughs> yeah. as your marketing. I'm like, none of it was personalized. Yeah. He's just using all the buzzwords and everything you can mm. imagine, you know, just all different colored emails and just trying to flog everything and going, mm. you know, this would be a good deal for you and all that sort of stuff without did, actually understanding my position. That's what about, that's what this year I was just about to say. Did he work with you on strategy? Do you have any chats around strategy or what? You no. know, no, nothing. No, it was literally just, here you go, mate. Here's a property. Buy another you know? one, buy another one, yeah. whatever, until you max out. I had to chase him up and he said, mate, like, are you buying me anything? He's like, oh, mate, I'll have one for you in the next week. Yeah, right. And that's, that was one of those things where I'm like, uh, and then it came to it and I went, oh, well, I've waited. I've already paid like an engagement fee. It wasn't that much of an engagement fee, but, you know, I just wanted to get the deal done. Yeah. Mm. Thankfully, it's worked out, but yep. it could have gone the other way quite easily too, mm. judging by um, what this spies agent tries to flog all over his YouTube and podcast channels, you know, at the moment. So the other the other yeah. the other side of the equation, like the other yeah. properties that he that he was trying to sell at yeah. the time. All yeah, okay. Ones that probably don't um, perform the best. Okay. That, so okay. I'm sure 
townhouses investment. So I'm sure a lot of people out there will know the buyer's agent we're talking about. <laughs> no mentioning names. Though. Well, mate, let's 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 leave it at that <laughs> and we'll move on. So you've made the yeah. decision. It, 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 we've got an okay deal at the time yeah. that, you, that you're happy enough with, right? Yeah. Um, but obviously no personalization, no strategy. Just And, and then obviously yeah. just trying to flog your bulk sort of stuff on the, on the back end as well. So you've made yeah. it. You've, you've obviously reached back out to us after this thing's gone through as well. Um, man, that was 2022, yeah? Yeah. That would yeah. have been 2022? Yeah, it would have been so, early 2022. Yeah, perfect. So you've had you've obviously had a bit of an uplift on... on um, actually, yeah, talk me through deposit for the next one as well. So we're going early 2022. Talk me yep. through deposit, man, like how you started running through this next phase of the portfolio as well. Because you, when you came to us, obviously this is where we work quite well with you on strategy and we work yep. quite deeply with clients on strategy. Like what are you trying to achieve? What is it, you know, what is it you're trying to build? What's your actual position? Yep. What are the properties you need in your portfolio to keep moving forward as well? So yep. man, give me a bit of a rundown, I guess, of, um, yeah, you, you've made the switch over. What are you coming to us with? And then, and then we can obviously start working through the deals that we started punching out as well. Yeah. So I was coming through, I had more savings once again, you know, okay. I've always been a saver. My dad was like in finance management and all that sort of stuff too. So okay. it was instilled in us kids, you know, save your money, don't spend it. That sort of stuff too. And I also did a equity redraw on the um, first investment property too. On on your own home? Uh, no. This oh, one on, the, was, on the investment. Okay. You know, on okay, the investment cool. property itself. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Okay. So it was a kind of the same thing as when the when you bought that first one, you did uh, you obviously got the equity release out of the sorry when you bought the the first investment yeah so you did an equity release out of the primary residence and then you had some savings you're essentially doing the same thing on this next one coming yep. into deal number three yeah correct yeah okay okay perfect man so talk me through obviously I know the numbers but I'm not yep. gonna I'm not gonna say the numbers <laughs> mate hit me hit me with the numbers with how we went yep. with this and and obviously this is what we're talking how how many I will, I'm just trying to remember the exact month of last year as well because uh, it would be. June 2022, it settled. Okay. So I think okay. it was the 10th of June. Okay. So from where we are right now, we're talking 15 months on from, yeah. from recording date right now. Yeah. Mate, run me through purchase price, everything we went through within this deal as well. Yeah. Uh, so this was 390000 Yep. Um, Western Australian location. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff too. I think if back then it rented for 410 a week. Yep. But it was coming up for um, rental renewal in the six months. So that's in December mm -hmm. um, at the time. And then it already had like... $25 increase. So it was going to be 435. Okay. And that um, now that one is coming up for a new this December again. Yeah. So that's now going from uh, 435 to 520 yeah. per week. And we were chatting about this offline as well. Like it, yeah. that's, that's below market as well. So like yeah. market value, market rent on that thing right now should be about 550 a week. Yeah, correct. But yeah. yeah. And that, as it came through, it was just going to be easiest. It's good tenants in there. Yeah. They look after the place. They don't complain. Yeah. Lots of stuff too. So, and in 15 months, since we, we we since we bought this thing, obviously paid three hundred ninety thousand dollars for the deal. Yeah, estimated market value. Uh, probably about five fifty now. Yeah, right. so I, it's I would agree with you on that, mate. So, percent, you know, in um in a in a fifteen month window. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a pretty big gain yeah. in fifteen months. And you realize that capital growth, and you'll be cheering if you can get that consistently. Hundred percent. And the, and the crazy thing is, man, I think that market's still got at least like two solid years left in the tank. Yeah. And I remember when we were working out this strategy for you because we we were we were having a good look at the servicing and the funding and everything as well. And your servicing position for someone that like obviously isn't on a huge income, your yeah. servicing position was actually still pretty strong. Yeah. I think the reason for it was your ability to save, and you weren't blowing cash, and you weren't oh well, I'm I'm making okay money, so I'll go buy a you know a ute or something for 60 yeah. grand and then pay that thing off and i don't think people realize how much that depletes their borrowing capacity yeah and so when you go put something like that into the portfolio it absolutely so yeah well into your position it absolutely smashes you whereas instead man you're saving really hard it's actually literally exactly how i i, I never used to make that much money but yeah. i used to always save my ass off i didn't go blow money on stupid things yeah. and um and then yeah man my borrowing capacity was all right and i was able to do this stuff and so i remember when, when we assessed your position we we're like you've got enough in the tank after to to do another deal after this deal. Yep. And so we're like, let's target something in a, in a, in a rapidly rising market. So you're going to get chunks of equity yep. and, and let's focus on after this one, then we'll start focusing on super high yield, which will keep you in the game. Yep. But if we're going to be able to keep equity farming this one, because at that time as well, uh, mid 2022, uh, Silkstone had stopped running at that time as well. Yep. So the market obviously had obviously peeled off a bit yep. um, from that point. It started kicking again now, Brizzy started kicking again, probably around six months ago, yep. um, early 2023. But we needed something that we knew was going to give us growth. Now, those first two had kind of stagnated. Um, so going into the next one, we knew we needed that because that was going to be our equity farm to be able to keep doing deposits to then obviously yep. keep buying these um, these high yielding deals down the track as well. Yeah, keep building on it. Yeah. Going back to like the financing stuff, even my broker said to me, he's like, mate, the housing expenditure measure, the HEMS or whatever yeah, yeah. If they call it. He said, you're well below it. He said, the bank doesn't even believe how much you spend. Yeah. 
Hmm. And I just because I just didn't spend that much money. Yeah, so that the you, they actually would have bumped it eh, yeah. to the minimum. Yeah, yeah that they, used to happen to me yeah, all the time as well. Put it up to the minimum. I'm like, but I don't even spend that much. I'm looking at it going, I'm like, I'll just save. <laughs> He's like, what do you do? I'm like, save. And a bit of drug dealing on the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, sh- that one can't go on the podcast, can it? Yeah. No, nah, we'll, 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 we'll cut that out. No, nah, no, nah, we'll go. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what the transport is for, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't run Melbourne to Sydney. That's what all the drug traffickers do. They struggled during the border closures, though. <laughs> It's stop now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, that's classic. So, man, talk me through 2022. We're yep. June 2022. Yep. When did you reval that property? Um, hasn't actually been revalued yet. Okay. And that's so uh, it's just sitting there. I haven't okay. needed to touch equity from it. Okay. And that I've just been. Um, actually- Shit, so you got 160K bloody usable equity still sitting in that deal right there. Oh, it'd be less because I only did a 10% deposit. Okay. And okay. So, but yeah, over a hundred K of like yeah, equity yeah, yeah. and all that sort of stuff in yeah, there beautiful. to use and that, but I've just been taking it out of my um, PPOR. Okay. So you've been harvesting that. that thing. Yeah. Harvesting that. So that's been going good. And that now I've got more money, uh, sorry, more debt on that than what I actually purchased it for. Okay. <laughs> and that's that, fine. But it just keeps helping me buy more yeah. and more properties. So I'll just keep it there ticking along and obviously I get the claim back on tax time. Yeah. And that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. The um, investment purpose side of it. Not 100%. The PPOR side. And just before we dive into investment four and five is when we start moving through that vein and what we targeted there to keep moving as well. Yeah. What is, what's the plan with the PPOR at this point as well? Like you're going to stay in there for a while or are you thinking, um, yeah, what's the, what's the game plan there? I'm not too sure yet. We're actually going to have a strategy about this at some point, mm-hmm. as you're saying, just before we jumped on, I may be renting it out soon and moving in with a mate okay. or I may sell it and move in with a mate sort of thing. It's one of those ones where we've got to weigh up. You know, what's its future growth potential yeah. and, like and assess what, the debt position yeah. as well. Like what's it holding me back from and mm. like buy more properties. If I sell that one property, a bit like your first um, apartment you bought, if I sell one, can I go and buy two sort of thing Yeah, as it comes out? So yeah, just going through that at mm. the moment, all that sort of stuff. So well, can we even stretch it further with creative lending and crea- creative structures as well? So yeah, that's, that's where we're going to be sitting down with the broker very soon to, to run through all that as well. Yeah. So that's, I think that's going to be good, man. Cause yeah, we, when we run it, we run it to a point where we know we have that mainstream lending to a certain limit uh, yeah. and then we, we can get creative, man, which is, which is what I'm looking forward to strategizing through that next phase for you as well. But yeah. Man, we've gone we've gone farming, not in your normal backyard, but mate, we've gone yeah. farming Off in the side of the Creek. Country. Oh, that one, yeah, <laughs> equity farming. I thought you were going to talk about Perth. <laughs> <laughs> we're saving that one. We're saving yeah. that one for a big farm uh, down the track. But okay, yeah. twenty seven. Uh, sorry, bloody um, it, P- PPOR, right? So we're yep. we're farmed that thing. We've pulled some equity back out. Let's talk through the next phase. Obviously, yep. yeah. Well, mate, you, you you run me through that. And that's so. The next one was um in. Regional Queensland. Mm-hmm. That, sorry, I almost said this up. <laughs> um, and that was a two hundred and forty-two thousand dollars purchase price. Yeah. So originally it's going to be two forty-five, and that which um, obviously your buyer's agent negotiated for me. But there's a couple of things on the building and pair, so we knocked a couple of grand off there. Yeah, beautiful. And that so yeah, that one's doing well. It's probably worth now about three hundred. Okay, awesome. That, so that's in what's that? Twelve months sort of thing. Yeah, eleven months. What was the settlement date of that one? It was like settlement month. Do you remember? Settlement month was November. I think. Okay, right. Yeah. So we're literally talking 11 months. Uh, you're up over 20% on that thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. talking 25% on that as well. Yeah. It's still nuts and it's got a massive Beautiful. rental yield on it now. $410 a week. Ooh, 410 uh, on 240 purchase. Yeah, so 8.4. 8. Oh, mate. He's good. Uh, 8.5. He's good. Something like that. He's good. His maths are good. Uh, he went to school, guys. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. You know, being a truck driver, but when it comes to money, I'm invested in math. You just put a dollar sign in front of it, mate. Oh, you work it out. I'm interested. Okay. So an 8.4% yield. And just yeah. confirming, this is on a bread and butter deal. Yeah. High yielding bread and butter deal, which yeah, is what correct. we knew in the port, we needed in the portfolio to keep moving forward. Because at the yeah. time, like doing a construction loan or doing a construction phase at this point as well, would have taken you out of the market for a little bit too. Yeah. But we're in that, we still wanted to accumulate, still wanted to keep going. So, you know, obviously picking up that super high yielding bread and butter, um, you know, allowed you to allowed you to keep moving from a borrowing perspective as well. Yeah, definitely a couple of like pay increases and all that sort of stuff to help. So I'm definitely not on that 60K anymore, but so, I can't say okay. what I'm on now. But okay. It's a yeah, I'll say it's decent, but it's not out of reach okay. for most people. So it's not, yeah, so, 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 so it's not a stupid amount, yeah, right? Like, no. like a, you're not, you're not, you're not in a quarter of a million a year no. or something. I mean, I'll take it though, but <laughs> sadly I'm not. <laughs> you, you're hunting down for the boss. You're hunting <laughs> down the boss. All right, and that's it. It's okay. So 240, 242 purchase, running for 410 a week. Yep. That's beautiful. That is in, that was in November 22. Yeah. So we're getting quick. We're getting rapid fire here. Yeah. I'm not mucking around anymore. You are not mucking around, mate. That is, that is impressive. Yep. That is impressive. Mate, talk me through investment number five. 
So, yeah, investment four, four property sorry. five. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. On, mate. Sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry. You, you've even got notes there. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Well, like I'm ri- no, I'm writing the notes as I go. <laughs> like it's my portfolio and I know it or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, property yeah, five, investment four. My apologies, <laughs> mate. Thank you for correcting me. No, I just don't do it again, all right? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so that one just settled in August 2023. Okay. And that, so roughly, what's that? Nine uh, months, yeah, yeah. eight, nine months yeah, sort of thing yeah. from it. Yep. Um, that from one, settlement to settlement, yeah. Yeah, settlement to settlement, yep. yeah. So that one I purchased was two hundred sixty thousand. Okay. Again, regional Queensland. Um, currently renting for three hundred eighty five a week. Okay. And beautiful. it has um granny flat potential and all that sort of stuff to go on the back of it too. And what do you think? What do you think this thing is worth at the moment? Uh, but it'd be worth about three hundred. Yeah. Okay. 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 So so literally bought it, settled two months ago. Yeah. And we're already at forty k. Yeah. And that area is rising rapidly. I actually think it's worth a little bit more than that. Yeah. I think when we bought it, it was probably worth around that. But yeah. I think I think she's worth a little bit more because yeah, I mean that the market at the moment is going through your little jumps like we're seeing in, yeah. in Perth too. So that's um yeah, man, that's awesome. And what'd you say? Sorry, three hundred and uh three eighty five rental. Three eighty five a week. Yeah. So is that coming? That must still be high sevens. Yeah, I think yeah, mid to high sevens, something like that. With with strong uh, granny flat potential on that one as well because it's got yep. very nice side access, nice big block, um, fits all the requirements and zoning requirements for for that granny development yep. as well. Yep. Man, I think if we do granny on that too, you're probably going to be pushing. You're probably going to be pushing ten percent yield on that thing. Yep. You're going to be up in the nines. Yeah, be nuts for it. So it'll be good, good little cash flow deal. You know, that's add that good. into the portfolio and keep building. That's good. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Man, tell me, tell me, like, well, actually, the first thing, I'm- oh, the mogul, the menace <laughs> yeah. to the mogul. Now I'm bringing the brother along with me. 100%. The big, the big bro, big Josh, he, mate, he's picked yeah. a couple of deals up now as well. But, yep. mate, tell me, what do the, the family feel? How, like, how, what, what's their reaction to the menace to the mogul? Um, mostly pretty good. All right, so my dad just doesn't talk about it much. I think he's a bit worried about it. <laughs> he's, he's got yeah. his head in the sand. Yeah. He's out in the like, backyard. His, his um, partner lets me know she's worried about it because okay. I'm, I'm all about interest only. Okay. And that, but she much prefers like principal and interest because mm. she's owned property in New Zealand and had investments. Yeah. Whereas I just, yeah, I just go, oh, well, if it grows, I'll just pay the minimum I can on it. Interest only. Yeah. Like You're the, in accumulation yeah. phase, mate. I'll say the tax benefits too yeah. just outweighs anything. Yeah. So there's no point paying P&I if you can avoid it. Yeah, 100%. That, but yeah, I'll say everyone seems encouraging about it, you know, and I'm trying to encourage more people to actually purchase property and all that sort of stuff too. You know, you know what your boys say, the circle of influence. Man, sharing yeah, the love, so yeah. sharring the love. I know you've been, it's yeah, across. it's like you're saying, you, you definitely talk to a lot of people about this and, and kind yeah. of share your story as well, mate. It's, yeah. Man, honestly, it's inspiring stuff. Like to, to kind of get to this point as well, if we run through the numbers, actually you ran through the numbers earlier as well, right? In terms yeah. of exactly what you were. So, so as a total portfolio value, you're coming in at just over two mil. Just over two mil. I think it's two point. Zero four mil, roughly. Zero, zero, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And then, yes. and then debt level on that as well. Uh, one point three eight mil. Okay, one point three eight mil. Beautiful. All right. So you're sitting at six hundred and sixty thousand net equity. Yeah. yeah, mate, that's impressive. Yeah, you gonna sell them all and buy a Ferrari or what? <sighs> I wish. <laughs> nah, I got a couple more before I buy a nice car. Like even my car now is probably worth eight grand. Yeah, no, I got a motorbike, probably worth eight grand too, sort of yeah. thing. So I've got nothing expensive, and I don't see myself buying anything. Like I don't deserve it yet. Mate, I love the, I love the, um, man, I think like it's like the real, the realism of like your situation right now, right? You know what yep. I mean? Like you've got, and I know you love your bike. You go out and you have a lot of fun on your bike. I see you most weekends you're out yep. there having, having a burn, which is good, man. Cause you've yep. got your toys that you still can enjoy, but it doesn't need to be a $660,000 toy. You know yep. what I mean? Like it doesn't need to be something stupid. And yep. I think, man, what I find is like someone, they might get a little win. Maybe they bought one property and during COVID it had a nice run and then they, they pull the equity and they go buy themselves a hundred thousand dollar car or something silly, you know, like, yep. man, you, you've, you've, you've reinvested, you've farmed, you know, and you've got a lot of equity left in the portfolio. Like there's a huge yeah. amount there, man. Um, yeah. You know, so I think, man, like building it like that, it's 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 very inspiring to see, mate, the way you've built it like nice that. One. We've built with like a really nice structure now as well. And, and obviously that we're, we're getting into more into rapid fire sort of accumulation. Yeah. I know you and I spoke very early about continual accumulation and and doing, you know, aiming for two deals a year or a deal yeah. every six months. Um, and, you know, you, you've kind of stayed in line with that for, for pretty much the last 24 months, man. So that's, yeah. it's really, really impressive to see you, um, you know, working on that as well. Yeah. So like... All I do is as much overtime as I can at work sort of thing. You know, that helps bump the wage up and gives me that serviceability and that I can just continue going and all that sort of stuff too. So yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where the more you can earn, the more property you can buy, the more the properties go up in value, which means the more you earn. Yeah. And that, well, yeah. 
in net worth. Yeah, yeah, obviously 100%. not cash, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of stuff. But yeah, but mate, <clears throat> you look at like the, the the wealthiest people in the world, mate. They don't have it all in cash, or yeah. it isn't all in income. It's it's in assets. One hundred percent. Yeah, you know, and so, and so building a list, mate. You're exactly there. Yeah. Like you you're following in the same vein. Yeah, and I'm all about just assets that appreciate in value, sort of thing. So I'm not gonna obviously throw dirt on people that go out and spend sixty thousand dollars on a car. I will. Yeah, yeah, I you have. can. I did. <laughs> there it is, there it I literally just did. I was like, <laughs> "Thanks for calling me out, man." What a dog. You know, uh, <laughs> it's just you. You got to realize what it's doing to your like financial position. You know, you can spend sixty thousand dollars and go get a brand new Ford Ranger. Well, they're probably about eighty grand yeah, now, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. But, or you can put that money into a house that's going to go up in value, and in a year or two, you've already made that eighty grand back. Mm. And that, so if you can avoid it, you know, just stop the temptation. Yeah. And that, and don't go for loans for depreciating assets. Mate, it's a great, it's a great piece of advice. I was going to ask you, right. what, what are your key pieces of advice for, especially yeah. a young fella starting out? You know what's funny? Like, I know that you, you went to school with with Morgan, obviously, who's, yeah. who's my partner regular, and then young Bailey, who like you were a year under Morgs, and then a year over over Bales that yeah. that uh, that we've spoken about just recently as well, and he literally did that. Yeah. Seen what Morgs was doing, sold the Ranger, and because yeah. he he'd already paid it off banked the profit and then he's gone and bought his first deal and he's about to roll into his second as well. And yeah. um, I know, you know, Kyle, his mate as well. He's literally just done the same thing as well, man. And it's like, it's inspiring to see, mate, these young fellas getting inspired by journeys similar to yours yeah. and other guys will as well with, with these with these similar stories. Man, inspiring other people around them to focus on the future, not just like look at that, exactly like you say, take out debt now for a depreciating asset as opposed yeah. to putting your money to work and, and building it out. And mate, I think what you're showing here is like a really a testament to that because you literally could sell it down and buy almost any car, you know yeah. what I mean? Pay a little bit of tax. You're probably left with five, $600,000. You go buy almost any car that's out there that you, yeah. you could want, but instead you're reinvesting it, you're building it, you're keeping it moving. Yeah. Um, and man, like the, the crazy thing is like, I joke about you being an Aussie battler from Logan, but realistically, yeah. mate, I'll, you look at me, I was actually, oh, mate, I was an Aussie battler. The chicken well. farm. Yeah, man, hundred percent. It was a rabbit farm, but uh, oh, close enough. Close but, enough. Uh, <laughs> It, that's just payback from before, isn't it? <laughs> but mate, it's literally the same thing. It's like, like you realistically, and no offense here, yeah. you had no right to go out there and, and to do this and generate. But by by twenty five, man, you're six hundred sixty thousand dollars net worth. In the next couple of years, you're probably going to hit a milli. You yeah. know, probably in the next in the next one to two years, with where your where your assets are positioned and the continual accumulation you're going to go through. Yeah. Um. You know, and and you compare it to a lot of people that are out there doing other things and you are in that minority of who should have achieved that. But man, it's like grit, yep. determination, being a menace yep. um, and probably having that, you know, that that winning mentality has driven you to do this. So yep. mate, honestly, it's inspiring stuff. Like I love it, man. That's why I wanted to get you on. It's it's yep. not just the number of properties. It's who you are to get to where you got to as well, yep. mate. So it's a it's a super, super inspiring story, yep. man. You should be really yep. proud. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. I probably don't give myself enough credit for it. Is my... Settle on. Okay, yeah. I was actually talking to a friend the other day and I'm like when I settled on the fifth place, mm -hmm. she's like, Are you celebrating at all? I'm like, No. Yeah. Like, I I'm not there yet. Yeah. So my thing is like every property I've settled on, I just go, Oh, well, that's done. Straight. I'm thinking about the next one. Yeah. As soon as that one's settled, what can I do to get the next one? You gotta celebrate the next one. Yeah. Do you know why? Why? Six properties is is entering the point zero one percent of all Australian property investors in Australia. Yeah, that's true. So mate. You're 25 now, yeah. You've already yep. turned 25. Yeah, so you just turned 25. August next year is when you turn 26. Yeah, mate, you're gonna you're gonna get this. You're gonna be in the top by 25. You're gonna be in the top point one point zero one percent of property investors in Australia, mate. That yep. is something worth celebrating. Yeah, so definitely. I need to do an overseas trip. Just got to convince myself to spend the money, mate. But Tassie's also, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'll always go to New Zealand, you know, get me out of the country. 100%. 100%. Man, New Zealand's, New Zealand's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Like, even well. listening to your podcast the other week about, you know, the delayed gratification, but actually enjoying life. Like oh, I still enjoy my life. I get out on the bike and I love that and yeah. a bunch of mates, but just the realization of sometimes you actually need to spend money yep. and, that, and just enjoy the experiences. So I'm not about like um, just having a nice fancy car and all that sort of stuff too. I'll get that one day, yep. but just go out and have experiences of travel and all that sort of stuff too. Like I'm lucky as a kid growing up, Couldn't I did China more. and America and all that sort of stuff. That's cool. And that, so thankfully dad paid for that. You're a legend. <laughs> you know, I was too much of a Jew <laughs> and that, but yeah, just go out and experience more. So yeah. Europe trip coming up at some point. Yeah. Too. Just got to organize that with a mate and all that sort of stuff. So that's a fair few years. Yeah. Like organization. Man, I think, um, man, I think, yeah, like you got, you got to celebrate the wins. You got to do the little things to like enjoy the, the, the bits and pieces as you go as well. Cause obviously you've saved hard and you haven't blown anything during this period yeah. as well. Yeah, man. Like, and, and 
Yeah, something like New Zealand, you can do that trip on a budget. You can do that yeah. trip and enjoy it, but not have to. You don't have to spend forty grand or something to go yeah. do a, a nice trip. You know, so mate, I, I agree with you. I think you should be mate when you pull the trigger on number six, man. I think you should be giving yourself a whatever yeah. you do to celebrate. You got to celebrate that one. You got to yeah. celebrate. Obviously, the first one you have to celebrate the six yeah. being the point one point zero one. Yeah. You got to celebrate the double digits when you hit the ten. Yeah, I was um, like that one will be a nice overseas trip. You know, a couple months off work or something like that, or <laughs> maybe long service leave at that time, sort of thing, something like that. You yeah. Know? yeah. A car, okay. And that so I've always wanted an RS3. There we go. And that, and so I've okay. got a I've got a five cylinder at the moment, yep. but it's um a Ford XR5. So I've always wanted the better, more premium version. Yeah, and the faster version. So yeah, beautiful. Once I get ten, that's what I'll get. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got some goals worked out there as well. Yeah. I was going to ask you as well. Like, what's 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 the end goal? Like, what are you really trying to achieve out of this as well? Like, you know, do you, do you have the big picture in mind? No. So like, my end goal is I'm too goal orientated. Unless sort of stuff, not yep. goal orientated, but too competitive. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like setting the goals because mm-hmm. I just I'm just going to beat them anyway. Yeah. So I'm just going to do and buy as many properties as I can, and just continue with that until I go one day, it's enough. Yeah. I remember you and I, we butted heads over this a little bit in yeah. strategies because you'd be like, oh, mate, I just want to keep going. And I'm like, yeah. mate, you've got to give me something to work. Like I I, I need something sure. tangible because that's what I used to be yeah. like as well. But it's it's funny, man. You're just like, no, no, no. Just 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 keep me moving. Yeah. Just keep me investing. Keep me buying. I was like, oh, I can yeah. do that. No yeah. worries. That, we'll, we'll, that's my goal. We'll focus on that. Yeah. I just want to <laughs> keep a cum- constant accumulation. So yeah. I don't care what age I am. Yep. I just want to be accumulating property still. Obviously, at one stage, it will come to like a sell down and debt consolidation. Yep but that's going to be way too far in the future. So mm. as many as I can get before then. Yeah. Yeah. And just keep trying, keep buying more. That's awesome, man. Keep buying more. I love it, mate. I love it. So <laughs> yeah. I was going to say like strategy moving forward or game plan yep. moving forward, but you just want to keep accumulating. Yeah. Accumulation is key for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be one of those ones that get to say 10 or whatever and go, that's enough and wait 10 years, sell down five. Yeah. All sorts of stuff to pay off the debt and the other five and then retire. I'm, Bigger goals than that. Yeah. I'm, I can't stop myself. I'm, I'm too competitive and I'm too <laughs> driven. And like, even at work, they just go, you never stop. I'm like I'm always up, up there for overtime, anything like that. They, yeah. go, they always call me if it's a, like 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Customer break. Hey, that's good, man. I love yeah. it. I, honestly, I love it, mate. It's, it's yeah, very, very driven personality, mate. You can see yeah. why you've why you've gotten to where you have, um, and mate, that could just be the menace, man. It just, it literally, just, it's, yeah. it's a different breed on that side of things as well, mate. Oh. So it's super inspiring to see, mate. Honestly, it's really, really inspirational journey, mate. Like yeah. I said before, you should be really. I, I think you are, mate. A little proud of yourself, you know, with, yeah. with how you've done with this as well. Yeah. You, you should be, man, because yeah. this is this is a minority, mate, achieving this. So congratulations, mate. Honestly, thank it's you, mate. awesome. Yeah, thank you. I was gonna keep beating my brother really that's a competition (laughs) (laughs) he can call me a menace but my portfolio is worth more so (laughs) well that's classic bait for him (laughs) mate one final question for you yep any tips for aspiring investors i know i know just before we were talking you you know you kind of said don't don't put your money into depreciating or don't take on debt for depreciating assets anything else you throw out there or any yeah any any words of wisdom we're missing Jimmy with his with yeah. his wizardry and his wisdom. No Tell wise me. Wednesdays. No wise Wednesdays. <laughs> this isn't coming out. On Wednesday. <laughs> um, probably just to actually invest on your personal growth too, and that sort of a lot of things I've happened personally uh, recently. Sorry, yeah, personally recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that made you made me realize like my personal growth is actually quite important too. Okay. And that so don't neglect that and just focus on like the numbers and figures and all that sort of stuff. So the more personal growth you have, that'll actually come through in the portfolio at some stage too. Quantify that. What do you what do you actually mean by personal growth? Uh, like emotional maturity and all that okay. sort of stuff and actually, you know, being able to express it. And I'm quite a direct person normally. Mm-hmm. And that and that doesn't always actually work too well when you're trying to deal with real estate agents and stuff like <laughs> that. And, you know, I just tell them how I feel and then after about 10 minutes, I've got to send them the apology email going, uh, you know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, can I take that last email back? Uh, I overreacted or things like that. So you want people to want to work with you. Yeah. And that sort of stuff too. So yeah, just be calm about it and be professional mm. and just, yeah, focus on the figures along with your personal growth. Mm. And Man, I think that's uh, that's relative to age as well, right? Yeah. I, I will say that though. There's, there's a lot of people that do they do blow off the handle 30s, 40s, 50s as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be a fella in his mid 20s, but I think it's one of those things, man. Like, um, as you grow and as you get, you're like you deal with more of this stuff as well. And I think the the maturity that you're talking about is a rapid increase in like level for you because yeah. of because of what you're dealing with here. Like, you're dealing with a portfolio that a lot of people you know never never build, literally yeah. never in their lives build multi. You know, you're literally multi multi property portfolio here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's 
it's funny, hey, like when you first start, like eh, even the first deal, second deal, everything feels like really personal. Like it's it's like as in it's almost like an insult to you. Like, yeah. oh, why is this stuff going on? You start getting angry. And um, and it's funny, hey, like the more you do it, the more you do deals, the bigger your portfolio gets, the more you just realize it's just it's just part of the journey. Yeah. And like the way you react is is the result you're going to get as well. So if yeah. you're blowing up, you're not going to get a great result. But if you're trying to work a mediation, and sometimes sometimes blowing up is is necessary yeah. or it's called for, but majority of the time it's not going to it's not going to create a solution. Yeah. It just makes um, them not want to work with you exactly. Stuff, and like dealing with property managers, you know, sometimes it's a struggle. Yeah, that. But that's what my personal growth has been lately too. Just dealing with that and. me a discount for the past 10 weeks i said you haven't been managing my property <laughs> <laughs> so instead instead of actually talking to the real estate agent though, yeah, yeah. i talked to the principal okay yeah, you know, yeah so i gave him a spray but so at that time it worked but yeah. i've learned since then you know probably not the best way to go about yeah things. you got, yeah you got to be careful with some of these things as well because the management side of things it's like you know it's like that for 10 yeah. weeks you know what was going on like you yeah. got to be so yeah, chase up sort of stuff yeah would be one of my main tips for mm. them too so don't just leave the like management agent to actually do their job, yep. chase up and make sure they're mm-hmm. actually doing it and follow up with them and go, have you completed it? And all that sort of stuff. And just keep a constant eye on your rental statements, mm. which is something I've actually been slack about, but just to make sure they're doing something and all that sort of stuff and yep. make sure they're actually listening to you when you're doing repairs because my tenant actually wanted to move out. Really? Because that, that stuff hadn't yeah, been done. Of course, the maintenance hadn't been done and she said she was always complaining about it and all that sort of stuff too. You're like, you'd approved it bloody 10 weeks yeah. earlier. And I only knew about this when it came to like the contract renewal. Mm. And that so there's a whole argument in there about who's going through that and all that sort of stuff and yep. why they want to move out. Mm. So that was one of the. It's stressful. Like yeah, people who is. say that property investment is um, a side hustle or anything like that, or or it's passive. It's somewhat passive, mm. but there has been a fair few times where I've just sat there and just run the numbers and constantly run the numbers. And that because I'm a numbers guy. Yeah, yeah. I know they're going to be good, mm. but I'll just run them and get the same answer every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just stress myself. Mm. That so that's one of the tips. So. Just know your figures and don't stress. Mm. I think that I think what you said there of like managing your uh, like keeping an eye on your property management, especially your statements, like those monthly those yeah. monthly statements, uh, is really really important, man. Um, it's it's one of those things, especially like if you haven't bought with someone that's like a, or a recommended property manager and things like that. Yeah, um, you need to keep on top of those things because you never know what people are trying to slip through or anything as well. It's literally happened forever. Yeah, so it's one of those things you want to really keep on top of it that nothing's going through from yeah. that perspective. It's 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 just part of the it's part of portfolio management. Yeah, you know, and um, it gets hard when you start getting to a portfolio in my size. Yeah, <laughs> but when <laughs> but when you but w- like literally, it's 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 one of those things you want to keep on top of it. And obviously, you get to a point where you trust the people that you work with. Yeah. But at the same time, um, yeah, you need especially early on with especially with new property managers, you really yeah. want to make sure you, you're dialed in on that. Yeah. Uh, very early on, so 100%. so that's good, man. All right, so managing managing your your managers properly and everything yeah. as well, and keeping your eye on the numbers closely, and uh, and that personal that personal growth, and and, yeah. and continually focusing on the personal growth. Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's the main things to you know look out for and all that sort of stuff and mm. just continue to do it and you'll notice that the th- things that actually were major to you in the past year or two they're just a minor thing now like back when i used to get maintenance requests and all that sort of stuff it's only be a couple hundred bucks but i'd look and go oh really <laughs> nowadays i just go it's the joys of owning property mm. you know so the thing like you've got to realize what you're getting out of the property so you're going to end up making money out of that property anyway yeah. so the couple hundred dollars on maintenance like i'm all about i'll just do the maintenance when they need it because mm. i want to keep the tenant happy so there's nothing worse than a tenant complaining if their oven's not working or anything like mm. that. Just do your maintenance yep. so they want to stay there. Yeah, Just yeah. all your leasing fees and all that sort of stuff. It's not worth it to go through it every six or 12 months. Yeah, plus the vacancy period and all the rest of yeah, it as well. Yeah, 100%. It just eats into all your, well, not profit at the moment with the current interest rates, but it just eats into everything like that. So just keep your tenant happy, yep. keep them in there and just raise your rent somewhat in line with market. Mm. Yeah, I always love that touching distance. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's like it's like Perth, you know, you 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 reletting it at five twenty a week. Uh, it could go to five fifty, yeah. but you're keeping them happy. You're not having a turnover. You're not having to pay relet fee. You don't have the vacancy. Yeah. And you're keeping a good tenant happy and in the property. And and you know, you look at the increase from when you purchased it as well. It's still a massive increase from back then as yeah. well. So that's, so no, man, it's a that's a great that's a great situation to be yeah. in. Yeah, so I think it's still probably made me over a grand a week. Mm. And, that, and I'm not even going to work for it. Yeah. All I've got to do every now and then is reply to a couple of emails and sign a couple of documents sort of thing. <laughs> 
And that's so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah, life of a mogul, mate. Life of a mogul. <laughs> I don't have 50 properties yet, so. <laughs> oh, mate. I love it. I love it. Uh-huh. Ethan, man, thank you so much for jumping on and joining us. Honestly, this has been a pleasure to run through this, mate, as well. It was funny. At about 15 yeah. minutes in, I was like, shit, we're going to smash this thing out. And here we are, nearly 60 minutes 60 in, minutes mate. In. So, yep. mate, it's been a pleasure jumping, having you jump on and really oh. share your story, mate, going in depth into it all, man. It's it's honestly, man, it's been inspiring. I'm sure the listeners are going to find it very inspiring yeah. as well. I'll say fingers crossed, mate. You know, thanks for having me. It's been a good day. 100%, right. man. 100%. Been right. an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Listeners, right. thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did uh, recording it, and I'm sure I'm going to really enjoy it listening back as well. If you took some great value from the app, as always, um, please send it on to anyone that you think might take great value or be inspired by this journey as well. Maybe you're a mum and you want to send this to your, you know, a, a parent or something, you want to send this to your kid to, to, to show them what can be done by 25 years of age, um, or anyone that might take any sort of inspiration out of this story, please send it on and share it around the investment the episodes always really hit home and you never know whose life you can change by sending an episode like this on as well so please do guys and if you've uh, if you've enjoyed and you haven't left us a five-star review yet please jump on leave us that five-star review and testimonial and makes us know that we're doing the right thing um, and that we're producing the right content that you guys all love as well if you don't like it don't leave us a review <laughs> Nah, just joking. Just send us any sort of feedback as well, guys. Any questions, anything else you might like us to ask Ethan um, or any questions you got out of the strategy or anything off the back of it as well. We've got another Q&A coming up very shortly, guys. So please send in any questions, any information you got, any feedback. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Share, Share this around, guys. Share the love. And until next week, this is another Scouting Australia podcast. 